The third annual job fair for individuals with visual impairments, sponsored by the Mass Commission for the Blind, Carroll Center for the Blind, MAB Community Services, National Braille Press, and Perkins, took place in Cambridge, Massachusetts on October 24, 2013. It was hosted at Radcliffe, Helen Keller's alma mater. We're proud to be able to offer, to host, uh, to the different, the five different um, visually impaired advocacy groups uh, today's job fair and to encourage multiple other employers to attend. And something that we've encouraged and we will continue to encourage with employers, both higher education, nonprofit and for-profit employers, is to have all of their recruiting materials either in Braille or that they're using adaptive technology so that people can access their websites uh, for application, for information about uh, the, finding out about how they would be suitable as a potential employer. Hiring managers met job seekers and learned about workplace adaptations. They need to become aware that these devices exist and I think that will lessen their intimidation about hiring somebody who's visually impaired or blind. Once they get to see that technology and all that may need to happen is tweaking it with a little assistive technology and there is a solution and a person can be hired and do that job competently. We have braille displays with braille keyboards and I can either connect this keyboard using USB or Bluetooth to an iPad, iPhone, computer or Mac. And I also have a camera, which is located here. And the Pearl camera is able to take a picture of print, and then the software on the computer will read aloud what that image is. So it's possible for me to, when I receive mail, for example, I can open up and read mail by myself. I'm here today to let uh, anyone know who has a disability as part of their life that there's this resource available funded by the Department of Education where you can call or email and reach a person who can answer any questions that someone may have about the Americans with Disabilities Act. What I think will be particularly relevant for people today is that we can discuss what's called a reasonable accommodation which is something that you might ask your employer for to help you succeed in your job. Uh, if, for example, you have a mild level of vision impairment, uh, I could imagine asking an employer for a slightly larger computer monitor so it's easier for you to read text, and once you can do that, you'd be able to succeed uh, at the job you've been hired for. Local organizations wanted to educate employers about the capabilities of workers with impaired vision and demonstrate the mutual benefits of tapping this undiscovered and underutilized pool of talent. The sponsors held a brainstorming session one morning in 2010. It actually happened about four years ago, if you can imagine that. Uh, and we were in a little small room at Perkins and we had this idea of just teaching to employers what it's like to be blind or visually impaired. So it was a breakfast we had, a sit-down breakfast, we had an orientation, we had a few people that were blind or visually impaired get up and talk about how they do their jobs, uh, we, we talked about technology, and then we said, you know what, we want to we advance this into a job fair. So we had our first job fair at Perkins at the Grouse Beck Center, had uh, about 100 job seekers and about, I'd say about 10 uh, employers. Next year, we, last year was at Mass Challenge, in the Innovation District in Boston, and we had uh, close to 30 employers and 88 job seekers. And this year, we're having it here at Radcliffe, and it's a great venue. We have about 30 employers and about 70, 75 registrants of job seekers. The skill sets of these job seekers ranged from finance to social work and from high-tech engineering to preschool teaching. 
some of the largest employers in New England pre-interviewed candidates, offered insights about employment opportunities, gained new perspectives on visual impairments, and encountered a few pleasant surprises. If you're open to, you know, really finding out what people are interested in, what their passions are, that you can find something that will work for them, even if it means creating a position. Um, serendipity uh, allowed me to meet an individual today that is uh, fluent in Russian, and we have a need for a Russian interpreter at our welcome center. So, um, you know, be open to learning more about the person and what they're about and not necessarily being worried about what um, your preconceived limitations might be. What I like for people to know about my abilities is that I am a hard worker and that's one thing I take seriously. Um, I don't like to slack and hard work pays off a lot so it means a lot to me. I, I think the best thing that, that people can do, especially as employers, is give people a chance. You know, if you look at the statistics when it comes to people who are disabled or even visually impaired, um, a, a lot of them have very good degrees. A lot of them have gone to school. You know, we, we, we try as hard as we can. So the best thing for an employer to do is just open up the doors and, and, and just give us a shot, you know, and, and let us prove ourselves, just like anybody else. You know, to learn somebody, to know something, you got to give that person a shot. So just because a person is disabled or visually impaired, that doesn't mean that they cannot, they're not adequate. It doesn't mean that they cannot do the actual job. All they need is just that opportunity. And There's a lot of people who are disabled or, or visually impaired that, that, you know, are out of work. But if you look at their resumes, it, it's, it's impressive.